Chapter 9 starts with Leonard explaining how technology does a good job at feigning happiness, but it is often not genuine. We are good at finding false happiness in trivial things that do not truly bring it to us. There are many forms of happiness in this society. In the last two centuries, our society has flourished with human progression, and we all have different meanings to what happiness is. We do, however, have one unified thing that makes every single person happy, whether we realize it or not, and that is the ability to progress and advance in our society almost as much as we want. We also have sourced our happiness into technological devices more and more every single day, however. We have televisions, computers, handheld devices, and video games, to name a few of the important ones that have begun to take up so much of our time. We are at a crossroads in this pivotal stage of technological development. We can use what we have right now for the well-being and the advancement of our society, or we can let it doom us. We've used technology to comfort us, to show us a variety of things when we have the world at our fingertips. We can post selfies to receive validation from others and make ourselves feel better, share funny videos to people all across the world, learn new things and read articles on any subject from many different websites. Technology, however, has no bounds. It does not think of how people can become addicted to it or positively benefit from it. The pursuit of technology is a reckless pursuit, mostly consisting of money. The people at the very top are not thinking about the boundaries or the ethics. It is simply to push the future of technology into the hands of normal people, but at a great cost that they are not concerned with. We need to have healthy discussions about the progressions and the boundaries of technology and what could potentially benefit us and harm us. We need to have discussions about what people are doing with our data and how our data is being handled. Humanity's relationship with technology is at a very pivotal time. We need to have a better understanding that artificial intelligence and virtual reality are not the same things as humans and the real world. While they are nice luxuries, there needs to be more of an understanding without severely catastrophic consequences to our society. Humans, however, need to learn happiness outside of a computer. Digital ethics are the discussion topic for Chapter 10, and this is something that I find comical and ironic. The internet and ethics do not seem to go hand in hand. You can get away with almost anything on the internet without any real or severe consequences for whatever may have been done or not done. What does go hand in hand are ethics and morals. As mentioned on page 134 by Leonard, if our world is soon to be run by computers and machines, what will happen to humanity's ethics as they are right now? Will they disappear with every new technological advancement? Or will we remain in tune with our natural human morals? Will these self-learning technologies that we are developing more and more every year be able to learn something that is not able to be completely programmed by mankind? In the digital age, we must also consider ethics. We need to consider a variety of things as humans, and one of those things is our relationship with technology in general, as I mentioned. We can have a healthy, coexistent relationship, or we can allow it to destroy us. I fear we are on the road of the latter. We must be able to have our own privacy on the internet, the ability to remain neutral. While Silicon Valley goes through a reckless pursuit of AI, VR, and pioneering our personal data, we have also become prey to a surveillance state. We have many people who could potentially be watching us right now, and that is an unacceptable notion. We must be able to rely on humans for our work and properly understand that we cannot employ and rely on AI to do every single daily task. We must take responsibility for our fate. While technology can help with the workforce and make some things easier for us, it should not be used to take over the workforce completely. Once we do that, there will be no going back. There needs to be a more established set of rules on how technology is handled, used, and distributed to a wide audience. There are many that unfortunately know no bounds.